I'm okay. It's everyone else who needs help. Now, <laughs> how often have you said that to yourself? It's like yeah. when you're driving, right? It's, I'm a great driver. It's everyone, everyone else, else that is, is terrible. terrible. So I think we have the course for you. If you find yourself saying that to yourself every once in a while, well, you need to visit Ruth Sermon, who is the Can Mediate International President. Ruth, it's great to have you here. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Hi, and Ruth. This kind of conflict resolution, I, I don't even know if it sh should be called that necessarily, but it is very unique the way that you talk about it, isn't it, Ruth? Explain why. Well, typically in, in many situations when people are looking for skills in managing conflict, they're talking about getting better communication skills, they're managing, uh, they're, they're doing, um, they're, they're, they're spending a lot of time trying to figure out how to manage things. The, the challenge that we've found is that typically people don't really understand what's going on behind the scenes. How is it that you can get into a conversation that starts out as a perfectly normal conversation between two people right. and ends up and everybody walking away with that deer in the headlights look going, <laughs> what happened? I'm not talking to her anymore. I don't want anything to do with him. I'd like to see him fired. I, you know, and, and all of a sudden, you've got into the weeds. Mm -hmm. right. And so all the skill in the world isn't going to help if you don't understand what it is that got you there in the first place. So the I'm OK course uh, came out of a conversation with a colleague when we started talking, because we're mediators. We spend a lot of time dealing with upset, ticked off people. Um, <laughs> often large numbers of them. <laughs> right. And so in that context, we started to talk about the patterns that we were seeing when we would come into an organization, because we do primarily workplace and group conflict, so okay. churches, communities, workplaces, businesses, and so on. Um, the patterns that we would see recurring again and again and again and again, almost to the point of them being archetypes. So the type of thing that's almost predictable. And we started pulling out the different patterns that we saw and they're, they're traps that as human beings we fall into when we get into them if we don't recognize that we've got caught in this trap we can find ourselves with that deer in the headlights look I really actually wanted to talk about the traps because we read through it a yeah. little bit the, the information that you sent us and uh, there's a couple of them that really stood out to us so we'd love it if we could sort sure. of put them to you and have you give your two cents one that was really intriguing was the fact that when you have two people you in fact have six personalities, you say. What does that mean exactly? When you and I are in a conversation with each other, there are actually six personalities at play in that conversation. So there's me as I see myself. We all have a vision of who we are. Right. I see myself as being competent. I see myself as being beautiful. I see myself as being intelligent, a person with integrity, honest. And then there's me as you see me. Right. Not necessarily the same way I see myself because I don't know how I come across to you. And then there's me as I really am. And guess what? You get three, too. How I see you, <laughs> oh, how right. see you, okay, you see yourself. That makes complete sense. It does. And yeah. yet, if I go through life believing that the rest of the world sees me the same way I see me, we have a problem. Mm. Which not, is everyone. Yeah. Mm. Uh, right? It really is. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And, and it plays in. It comes in a lot. The traps are very linked to each other in that it's rare to find just one of them operational. Typically what you'll find is that they've layered. And so you get a level of dynamic complexity in a conflict that goes way beyond what people believe is, is happening. So Ruth, once you get the understanding that there are these six personalities in any two-way conversation, how does that benefit you in the long run? Well, if I'm aware that I'm getting a weird reaction from you, so let's say I'm your boss. Right. And I come to you and I say, how are you doing on that project? Now, I'm right here. I'm happy to help. All you have to do is call, is, is come down the hall. My door is open. I'll be ha I've done some research for you, and I'm right in your face. How do I see myself? Helpful? Supportive? Mm -hmm. Of course. Yeah. Empowering? Of course. How do you see me? In your face? Micromanaging? Doesn't trust me? We right. have an issue. And so when I become aware of that, it then allows me to read what's going on, take a step back and say, hang on a second, is it possible the way I'm coming across doesn't mesh with what I think I'm doing? So should we be asking ourselves that question all the time? It would help. Yeah, okay, so that, no, that's, that's a really good tip yeah, right off absolutely. the bat. Okay, well, now we want to pick your brain for more. Um, okay. You talk about the importance of assumptions and conclusions. What does that mean? Well, my grandmother, I had this really cool grandmother, she was 101 when she died, and she was an elder and a matriarch in every sense of the word, but she also had a collection of pithy one-liners she used to pull out and use reasonably regularly on those of us in our large extended family who weren't necessarily doing what she thought we should be doing. <laughs> Once you get past 75 and 80, tact and discretion are no longer yeah. required, and she had a knack for just nailing you with whatever you had done. 
So in terms of the assumptions and conclusions, have you ever jumped to a conclusion? Certainly. Oh yeah, everybody. Yeah. Sure. Absolutely. How many times a day do we make assumptions? Mm -hmm. All the time, mm -hmm. constantly. What happens when we elevate those assumptions to the level of fact and act on them accordingly? They only did that to make me mad. Mm -hmm. What did you do with my shoes? That actually feeds into the um, intent and impact, but the assumption being that somehow or another I snuck out of my bedroom at 3 o'clock in the morning and hid your shoes just to make your life miserable. Right. Right? A lot of assumption, a lot of conclusions coming in, and then I act on them. And as a result, I create a problem for myself that really didn't have to exist. That's interesting because I think we've all been in that position where maybe you've misplaced something in the house. The, the, the first person you, you, you look at is not yourself and, oh, where am I? Hey, what did you do with the, you say yeah. to one of the kids or maybe you say to your spouse or friend, hey, right. what did you do with my watch? What did you do with my hammer is one that sticks in my mind. <laughs> right. What did you do with my shoes? My shoes, uh, typical one for kids. My line used to be, well, it's been a while since I wore them. <laughs> <laughs> and for a dollar, I'll help you look for them. Ruth, along that line, you remind me because Derek's right, you know, we just sort of alluded to our spouses there, and earlier you alluded to your boss. Who would this course be more most um, suitable for? Is it professional? Is it personal? Is it both? It's both. Uh, we get a lot of professionals because conflict management skills have become a core competency in a lot of organizations, particularly for people in management and executive positions. As a result, we've got people who realize that their conflict management skills, their ability to read situations, to understand employees is maybe a little shaky. Right. And as a result, this is having serious career implications for them. On the other hand, you've got parents who have kids. Uh, it works just, it's just as applicable for parents and kids. Um, for partners. Uh, yeah. Anybody have a relationship with anybody that ever maybe occasionally gets into the weeds? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. It, 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 Everyone. It's, it's yeah. suitable for everybody. Absolutely. Details of how people can get involved. People can get involved by going to the website. Mm -hmm. So www.canmediate.com. I think they were going to put it up yeah. on the screen yeah. for people. Yeah. Uh, there. There's actually a link right on the home page that will take you right through to the registration page. Um, take your time. Come if you think it's of help to you. We don't do the pushy, 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 you know, right. seats are limited. <laughs> right. rah, 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 rah. Get in now, only $295 yes. today. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, it's, uh, this is a course that's been around now for a number of years. We've had phenomenal feedback from people over it. And uh, so we're not going anywhere. It'll be around. If it doesn't suit you to take it this time, we'll offer it again. But let us know you're interested, and we'll be happy to... Um, to, spot. To, to see well, you. Gosh, we learned a lot in, in seven yeah. minutes. I can imagine, imagine what the full like course. Yeah. Well, thank well, you it's so a, much. It's a whole day. Can I plug yes. one other thing? Yeah. We're doing a free course on the 29th of March. Okay. Uh, it's a fundraiser for the United Way, and it's Terrific. called Discover Your RQ. What's your default conflict blueprint? Who are you when you get into a conflict? What do you bring to the table? Oh, gosh, I don't even know if I want, if I want <laughs> the answer to that. <laughs> Ruth, That's thank great. you so much. We really right. appreciate Ruth, it. Again, care. if you want to find out more information, www.canmediate.com or you can call 613-256-3852.